Wow, so we have a bad ship. I got duped. Well, hello everyone and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. On today's video, we're gonna be looking at some stuff I got from China, AliExpress to be precise, maybe eBay, I don't know, both of them. Anyway, I wanted to see if these chips I've ordered, which are old chips that might be fake or might be real, who knows, hopefully some of these chips are actually good. So without further ado, let's get right to it. So I have a little assortment of chips here that I've got from AliExpress and they are, I, I think I've had them for a little while. So unfortunately, if any of these are bad, it's way past the window of me getting any kind of money back. So let's take a look at what we have. So we have a TMS 9981. This is the video chip from the TI-99. We have a SID that is a 6581. So that's a SID chip for a bread bin. In this package, there is an analog devices A to D chip, analog to digital converter. Unfortunately, I don't have anything to test this in right now. It was for a project that I'm working on and these were pretty expensive to order from eBay or whatever. So it was very cheap from AliExpress. I'm just gonna inspect this one for potential fake signs without, able, without being able to test it. In this package here, which we'll open in a second, we have the TMS9900. So this is the 16-bit CPU from the TI-99. And finally, in this package, we have another SID chip, 6581. So that's the little selection of chips that I'm gonna be looking at today. So for discovering if these have been rebadged, I have two things in my arsenal. I have isopropyl alcohol. Now, unfortunately, this is only 70% because it's pretty much impossible to get the 99% stuff right now that's normally available everywhere, but because it's a human malware, um, seems like I need everywhere I look, there is only 70% in stores. And then we have 100% acetone. So this is nail polish remover. I found actually this to be incredibly effective at taking the paint off of any IC that's been rebadged, more so than this actually. And in previous videos where I've looked at potentially fake or counterfeit or rebadged chips, I had only used isopropyl alcohol. I didn't even try this acetone, but this stuff seems to work really well for that purpose. And of course, for testing these, we have a TI-99. This is the one I repaired in the TI-99 repair series. So the CPU is already socketed in here because that was damaged. I had bought that locally from a salvage guy. And also, actually, that was the only thing that was damaged, I think, or was one of the ROMs bad too? I kind of forgot, actually, to be honest. Um, but anyways, the ROMs are socketed, the RAMs are socketed, and the video chip was already in a socket. So that's perfect for testing uh, these two chips here. And of course, for the 6581, we'll use my bread bin Ziff 64. All right, so I, I think I hear people asking right now, why did I buy these particular ICs from AliExpress? Well, one of the reasons is these things are hard to get these days, especially these ones. They're, they're not manufactured any longer. This analog device one might still be made, although I don't think it is. But these ones definitely aren't, right? And for a long time, China was accepting a lot of the e-waste that came from Western regions. And when those machines would get there, they would just probably start to pull them apart. And you know, I'm not gonna talk about whether that was a good or a bad thing that that was happening, that that stuff was getting sent to China to be taken apart like that. But the end result is that a lot of the ICs that were going to be just put into a landfill, like these, potentially these SIDs here, got taken off, cataloged, and put into a giant marketplace which allows us today to potentially buy up ICs that were on these machines that would have been otherwise put to a landfill. So it's quite an amazing thing, really, that this is even possible. Now, there's one thing I can pretty much be assured of with these four chips here, is that these are not counterfeit ICs. I just don't think anyone would have spun up any kind of manufacturing to remake, for instance, this very obscure CPU that really was only used in the TI-99 and that's it. The same goes for the video chip here, the TMS-9918. It was used in the MSX and some other machines like the ColecoVision and of course the TI-99, but that's really it. And you know, there's not this huge market for this particular chip out there. So I really don't see anyone ever spending any effort to actually remake these. 
what's most likely happening is that they're being pulled out of old scrapped machines, cleaned up, potentially repainted and rebadged to look new again so they could be sold as new for whatever reason, and then they get back in the market. Now, these SID chips here, they potentially could be fakes, but I don't really see how. These are analog synthesizer chips. It's not that easy to make fake analog synthesizer chips. Even Commodore, when they made the 8580, which is like the second generation SID in the, the later 64s, it sounded different. It didn't even sound the same. So anyone trying to make a clone of these would end up with a chip that probably sounds terrible or nothing like anyone what they want. They really, if you want the bread bin sound, you need to have one of these 6581s. There's really no way about it. Let's talk about how much I paid for each of these ICs. So the first one is the TMS-9918, this video chip. I paid a total of $3.73. That includes shipping, and that one came from AliExpress. So that's incredibly cheap, to be honest. Then the next one is one of the two SIDs. I don't know which is which. Uh, I got that from AliExpress. It was $24.57. And then the other SID, also from AliExpress, was $22.76. So those are pretty expensive, but like I mentioned, SIDs are in pretty high demand, and unfortunately, <laughs> it's not. it's been almost a year since I ordered these. Not quite, it's about uh, 10 months. So <laughs> I'm way past my ability to get money back if these don't work. Next up is the TMS-9900, which is the CPU here for the TI-99. I paid $4.83 shipped. I did get that from eBay. I don't really remember why versus AliExpress, but it did come from China. So, you know, same source as all of these. I mean, who knows? It could all be the same marketplaces all come from or even the same seller that's really has all sorts of different listings available. I, I don't really know, but that they, you know, all of them except for the SID here have the same pink foam. Not that that shows us anything, but you just never know, really. So for context, when I was repairing the TI-99, I ended up needing two of these because um, the first one I got worked and then I damaged it by shorting 12 volts into some of the pins that didn't need 12 volts. So I needed a second one and I bought them locally from a guy who recycled them out of uh, old TI-99s, I guess. And they were $14, or maybe they were 16 or 17 shipped. And this one was only $4.83. Now it took a long time to come, right? Cause it's the slow boat from China, so to speak. You know, this comes USPS mail or whatever like this with a little customs declaration, it takes forever, but it does come, all of these came. The only thing is I'm gonna actually mention, I ordered three SIDs and only two showed up. But like I mentioned with AliExpress, it was very easy to get my money back for the one that never showed because I just waited until the timeout and said it didn't arrive, you know, while I got these two. And uh, sure enough, they got they must got my money back. And I think the third one was around 20 something dollars as well. I tried three different vendors for buying these. Now I will mention, <laughs> I know I'm still talking about price, but I won't talk about the vendors that I got these from only because those change constantly. So there really, there's no way for me to put valid listings for any of these anymore. But essentially I just searched for Moss 6581 and TMS 9918 and TMS 9900. And I found tons of listings. You just kind of search, try to find the cheapest ones, including shipping, stuff like that. Check eBay, check AliExpress if you're looking for these, because sometimes it's much cheaper on one of them for some reason than the other. So yeah, anyways. Okay, the last chip is the little analog to digital converter here. And that was a total of $3.85 from AliExpress. Very inexpensive. I looked around on eBay from US sellers and I seem to recall at the time, it was like $15 for one of these chips, new old stock. So I just ordered one from AliExpress, just thought I would try it now. Like, like I said today, we're not gonna be able to test this, but these other four ICs definitely will be able to test. Okay, time for a close look at these to see if anything looks amiss. So the two SIDs I got, we have a 6581R4AR, the advanced resonance version. And this one just says 6581 with no Rs. This, this SID here has a 1982 date code. So that's you know near the early end of the Commodore 64 era. And then the AR version, these are typically found in later machines like 64Cs with the longboard or some C128s. This one has a date code of 1986. That totally jives. Both of these jive with what you expect. I'm expecting a 6581 that has no Rs at all. 
with the 1982 date code, absolutely that seems legit. And this one here with 86 date code, that, that completely coincides with what I would expect. Now the silkscreen markings also look completely legit. I'm not seeing anything that would tell me that there's a problem. If we flip over the AR version, it says Hong Kong on it, which that's completely legit. And this other one here says Korea. So both of these, I would say, are not rebadged. They look completely legit. Nothing about these looks out of the ordinary for me. I don't suspect anything. And then finally, taking a look at the pins, everything looks really nice with these pins, but I think as part of the refurbishment process, it's very typical for these vendors to somehow do a process that cleans up the legs makes them look brand new again. And they are splayed out at the perfect angle to look brand new. I mean, there's no way that these chips are brand new, <laughs> but it certainly looks like you can see the angle of the legs. Now, SIDS are almost universally socketed. So it's a good chance these were just pulled out of sockets. That way they were never soldered into a board so that the pins don't have to be cleaned up of the solder. But it, I think there's they have a process that makes even chips that were desoldered to look perfect. The only thing is, is that sometimes the legs get trimmed off when they're installed in the motherboard and they're much shorter than normal. So some Commodore chips might look like that, but SIDS, that's typically not the case. Moving on to the TMS9918 ANL. Uh, no day code of any type, but it does say Texas Instrument. There's a logo in that circle there. You see that? I have no reason to believe as well that this is fake. Now it looks totally spick and span brand new. That's not to say who knows what kind of chemicals were used to clean this up. Typically it's installed in a machine and has a heat sink compound on it. Uh, let's see if anything looks out of the ordinary here. Definitely looks like a little bit of flux on that pin right there. And this pin up here is bent a little bit. Um, but I'd say that everything looks good. It says Japan in that circle right there. And right there, A4. But again, I don't think this has been repainted. And it's definitely a real TI chip. I know that Noel on Noel's Retro Lab, I think his channel's called, sorry Noel if I'm getting your channel name wrong. Um, he, you had, you, he ordered one of these and it was like the wrong one. He got a video chip, but it said it was a 9928, which I think is what he needed. And it was actually a 9918, for instance there. But the 9918 is the NTSC variant. So we'll know pretty quick if this works properly. Next up is the processor and the silkscreen marking or whatever the markings on here is laser etched, it looks like. It's actually kind of hard to read. So I'm wondering if this has been sanded down, repainted, and then re-laser etched. Um, we'll have to look at what the CPU looks like in the actual TI to see if it <laughs> looks anything like this. But this chip is certainly looking perfect. Now, these are pretty much always soldered into the board. And the legs here, I mean, I don't know. They look perfect. They're a little sort of all over the place, like some are bent slightly. And like I said, it's, I just can't imagine them making a fake version of this. And these were never manufactured currently or recently. So it's not like these could be off an assembly line of reject dodgy parts that they just sold as new, which I know happens with modern stuff. And lastly, these little analog devices chip here, this analog to digital converter has a date code 1988, 33rd week. Yeah, okay, it looks fine. The legs are a little bent up there. <laughs> Nothing I can't fix. On the bottom here, it says Philippines. I don't know, not much else to say about this other than looks okay, I guess. All right, well, here are the chips and I have some cotton swabs here and I'm going to bust out the acetone. I'm just gonna pour some into the cap. All right, so let's just see what happens when I try to rub these chips it's gonna be a very quick giveaway if I end up with black stuff on the cotton swab, then that's a real indicator that something is amiss. We'll start with the CPU since this looks the most suspect. Aha, uh -huh, look at that, everyone. That has definitely been repainted. Absolutely, 100% for sure. And what I have found in the past, let me grab, grab one. I bought these from AliExpress. These are EEPROMs that are used on the Amiga. I think I've talked about these before on the channel. So <laughs> they were sold as some AMD part, AMD 27C400. And when I got the chips, the, the, all you could see was this laser etching. And then these are ceramic chips. You can't really sand these down, especially because of the window. So what happened is I used acetone to take all the paint off. The laser etching of this fake AMD logo and 27400 is still visible, but the original marking is now visible as well. 
it's essentially the same chip as this AMD fake stuff that was laser etched on here and then, you know, painted and to cover up the original badge. But the original chip, it's perfectly good. In fact, the AMD chip that I got, you know, it's the same pinout, same everything as that. The only thing I think is they were claiming it was faster. They were saying it was 95 nanosecond. And the reality is this chip is 120, but whatever. In an Amiga, it doesn't matter. I ordered like 10 of these and um, basically of the 10, they were all rebadged fakely and half of them were this Hitachi or maybe six of them or maybe four, I don't remember. And the other half were Mitsubishi. Uh, similar part, 100 nanosecond though. So, you know, different part number, but again, same functional chip, same pinout, same everything. So why was it rebadged as an AMD? I don't know, but I guess to be sold as new, but I was still happy because I got real chips. I mean, legit EEPROMs and they, and they work perfectly and they didn't alter the chip at all. Like it still comes back with an ID of this Hitachi part and, and same with the other Mitsubishi ones. So it's like, who are they fooling? I don't know, but whatever. I cleaned up the paint and I found out what kind of chip it is and I was happy because it's the chip I, I wanted these anyways and it was really good price. So I'm, I'm really not complaining. It just it does seem strange. All right, so back to this, this uh, CPU here. Let me just try to clean off the paint and see if the original markings like silkscreen is, is hidden underneath or something. I don't think so. I think these get sanded down so the original silkscreen comes off. But I mean, look, I'm still taking paint off and uh, both sides of this cotton swab. Let's swap to a new one. Okay, so yes, I, I'm through the paint, definitely because the cotton swab is pretty much coming back completely clean now. So let me see if I can just make out any kind of markings. And no, unfortunately I cannot. So I presume with this chip, they gave it a light sanding, which removed the original silk screening because it wasn't laser etched. This is laser etched on here. So even taking the paint off, there's still the markings visible. It's not super easy. It's a little harder to see now, but you know, there it is. You can see it, right? That's the laser etching that they put into this. But the original silk screening is gone. So really there's no way to know what this chip really was. Now, I mean, I'm pretty sure it was actually a, a TMS 9900, right? Like I said, who's gonna make a fake one of these chips? No one. The giveaway that it's been sanded as well. Oh yeah, okay, so there's a little bit of a giveaway. Down here in this notch, if I feel it, it's kind of a rough texture right here. And yet on this area, it's so smooth. Other than the laser marking, if I, if I run my fingernail across the, the flat part, it just feels like perfectly smooth plastic. But here, it's rough. And underneath here, there's quite a texture. Uh, and it probably had that same texture on the top originally, and it's been removed. So again, why is this done like this? Who knows? But hopefully this chip does work. I'll just leave it with the uh, paint removed like that. So it's a little bit of a mystery, and I'm just gonna draw a question mark right here just uh, to say that it's suspect, very, very suspect. Next up, the TMS 9918. I think this chip is completely original, unscathed, and like it, like what should happen, notice the cotton swab has basically a little bit of dirt that's coming off, but it's otherwise not black with paint or anything. And this is, this is what you would expect. If you take a real IC and you, um, you rub it if it's been repainted or anything shenanigans like that. Well, there you go. But anyhow, yeah, so I'm gonna say that this one seems legit. And next up, the two SID chips. These are probably definitely, I'm gonna say 99.999% untouched. And look, nothing is coming off on that cotton swab at all. And on this other one, it's gonna be the same. The silk screening doesn't come off. Yeah, it's a little bit kind of darker, the, the cotton swab, but that, that's probably because it's taking dirt off. And last up, this little analog devices chip. Yeah, this one, it looks fine as well. It's just a little bit of dirt coming off on this cotton swab, but otherwise I'm gonna say that this one, also original, untouched, no signs of fakery. And then I also haven't shown uh, the isopropyl alcohol, so I'm just gonna spray a little on the desk right here. This is 70%. And I'll just uh, see how it affects the paint on this uh, TMS 9900 here. 
So notice the cotton swab is not really doing anything. It's coming out clean, mostly. But it does show you that acetone is what you'd want to try to use to take the paint off these rebadged chips. I think I want to start with testing the SID since that's the easiest, since uh, the ZIF64 makes trying out different chips a real cinch. So with my ZIF64, I have a known good SID in here. It's the one under this heat sink here. So let's just uh, use the Easy Flash to load up 8-bit dance party song, Donkey Kong Arcade. And let's do a little bit of a test and see, uh, just hear the baseline with this known good SID. Well, at least it was known good when I last tried it. So I'm here in Adrian's Tools, and thanks to a wonderful viewer, the very first thing on here is 8-Bit Dance Party 36K. And this was made by one of my viewers, who is incredible, and check this out. And I might have shown this very briefly on the channel before, and I've had this for a little while, and I think he sent me some updated ones, so I need to go check my email and look for that. But when I run this, take a look and a listen. It's my own, very own 8-Bit Dance Party demo intro thing with the right song and a picture of me. All right, anyhow, yeah, this sounds wonderful. It's uh, very typical of the 6581 SID. Nice deep bass line in this. Of course, it's playing a little faster than the song was composed for because it is playing on my NTSC machine. And it would be a little slower and the frequency slightly different on a PAL machine. Anyhow, but I'm used to it this way and I really like the deep bass that you get out of this particular SID. And isn't this so cool? It has my logo, 8-Bit Dance Party, has this like cool little spinny, you know, color cycling thing around the middle, C64 uh, on, the, on the LCD screen there. I just, I absolutely love this. Plus we get to hear the awesome music. So let me pop out this known good SID here. And of the two SIDs I just got, I don't really need to make these, mark them as different because uh, one's the 82 one, which is the very early version. And then the AR is the later one. So yeah, it's easy to tell these apart. So we'll just pop one of these in. And let's power this on, see if this sound chip works. Go to Adrian's tool and here we go with 8-Bit Dance Party again. Turn the volume up on the speaker. All right, let me get my thoughts on this particular SID here. So yeah, it's working, it sounds fine. No, nothing totally out of the ordinary with the playback. The bass line is not as tight as it is with the original chip, which is uh, this one sitting right here. This has a nice tight, tight bass line. This one's a little, I don't know, muddier, a little more distorted, I'm not quite sure. I'm just gonna quickly test a couple other songs on here off camera, just to make sure that this sounds as expected. Now, I have these heat sinks stuck on the original SID here from this machine. I'm not sure what exact version this is underneath here. And there are differences from one SID to another just with the way the filters sound. In fact, I'm totally expecting this AR one to sound a little different as well. So this might be an AR, might be a later one, it's probably a later one. But yeah, this early one, which of course it's getting hot now as they normally do, um, sounds a little looser than this one, but let me run it through a few other tests. All right, listening to some other songs that I know really well, this this is definitely a working SID chip. It just sounds a little different than I, I'm used to, but I actually haven't spent a lot of time listening to 1982 SIDs, like these first revision ones. It may just be how these sound. Nothing sounds wrong with it though, just like I said, the bass, lines a little looser i don't know it's just stuff around there like l l bass drums things that are crashing sounds sound a little different actually a little bit more like they do on the 8580 to be honest and a little bit less than like they do on this chip but i think this is a pretty good chip i'm very happy considering and i'm going to put a big check mark on here to say that that's a good chip so that's a successful purchase from aliexpress there all right, next up, let's test out the 6581 R4AR. 
Adrian's Tools, and here we go, 8-Bit Dance Party. Let me turn the speaker up. Okay, anyhow, okay, so this one sounds exactly like I would expect it to, like a 6581. Nice, tight, deep bass line, really good and clear. And I do find that these particular ones, these uh, R4 ARs here, or is it R5, I keep saying it wrong? No, R4 AR, that these have pretty quiet noise levels too. You just don't hear a lot of hiss, a lot of background noise through these. It probably varies from chip to chip again, and all the SIDs are a little noisy in the 64. A 64 is just not a super clean environment for sound, but these seem to sound a little quieter. But I gotta say actually that this original 1982 one also was quite quiet. No extraneous notes or loud noises or buzzes or anything coming from that one either. Excellent. I mean, I'll, I'll put this one through its paces with a couple other tests, uh, songs and stuff that I know. Judging by the way this uh, Donkey Kong arcade sounds, I really feel that this chip is working perfectly. And for really, what did I pay for this? I don't really know which one it was, 24 or $22 shipped. That's incredible, that's awesome. All right, with further testing now, well, you see I've already put a check mark on here because this 6581 R4 AR works flawlessly. It sounds great, nice low noise floor. I really can't complain. I mean, it sounds really good. It sounds exactly as I expect it. In fact, Remember how I was saying it sounds sort of similar to this SID, the one that was in this machine, and I was thinking about peeling off these heat sinks, and then I flipped it over, and I wrote 6581 R4AR on the bottom, so that this chip here is actually the same, and let's look at the bottom. Uh, this one says Philippines on it, and the one I just got from AliExpress does say Hong Kong, but either way, they're both the AR variant, and I like the, I like the nice tight baseline of these chips. So yeah, anyways, that's really cool. And it is neat that uh, both of these work, and I'd imagine that the difference in the way the baseline is, is really just due to this AR version versus this older original SID. Okay, for testing the other chips, I'm gonna need to pop this cover off this TI. Unfortunately, this is not a ZIF machine, so it is not super easy for me to open up and pull chips in and out of. But just the fact that it's socketed means that <laughs> it is still easy to test. But yeah, anyways, uh, this machine, if you haven't seen the repair video on it, was a donation from a viewer and uh, it did not work. The case was quite beat up, but thank you to uh, one of my viewers, not the one who sent this in originally, but another viewer who sent in some replacement keys for it. Also, several viewers have sent in a bunch of cartridges and other parts, and in fact, I have two other parts TI-99s that I need to take apart and see about repairing. I think neither of them work properly. Plus I have definitely some other parts like cartridges to build and lots to do in the TI-99 space. So I'm certainly not hurting for TI-99 parts at this point. Okay, I just realized something that this TI that I'm opening, <laughs> it's actually not the one I repaired. This is one that another viewer sent in that needs repair. So unfortunately, I'm gonna stop this disassembly process here because I need to take apart the one that I've already repaired because it has socketed CPU. This is not gonna have a CPU in a socket. So uh, that's not gonna help me with this repair. I was wondering, I was like, I really don't remember putting the the RF shield back in the one I repaired. And this one has the full RF shield on both sides and everything. So it was the RF shield that gave away that this machine is not the one that I've already been inside of. All right, here is the TI that I need to take apart. And I actually wrote right here, mail call donation repaired 17th of July, 2020. So yeah, that's the giveaway. Both of these have two missing keys. That other one I just took apart. So I mixed them up, whoops. And just as I had mentioned, RF shield is gone. I had done this here. I used this uh, crapped on tape to hold the power supply cable on and I did put this 
piece of plastic here because I didn't want uh, I didn't want these AC voltage wires ever potentially coming into contact and shorting with anything on there. So I made sure that <laughs> that was protected. <laughs> oh, there it is. There's the TI-99 in all of its complicated glory. And there's the ROM that got damaged from the 12 volts. So the CPU was the original problem with this thing. And the ROM got damaged when I was installing the CPU socket. I ended up bridging 12 volts into one of the lines, data lines, it killed the, this ROM chip and it killed the CPU as well. So either way, I ended up buying two CPUs and I had to replace this ROM and it took a whole lot of figuring out to figure that stuff out. Here under these heat sinks is the video chip. So these two ICs are what we're gonna be testing in this board. All right, first I need to test this thing. So I'm gonna plug in the video cable. This uses the regular Commodore VIC-21. So I'm using my little pigtail VIC-20, C64, it's all the same. That works in there and let's turn this on. Let's see, I don't have the speaker hooked up so I won't have the sound, but there we go. We have a working TI-99, so my fix, it still works. Thumbs up to that, right? All right, well, I think I wanna start with the video chip here, the TMS9918ANL. So underneath here is the original, which I'm just going to lever out of here carefully. Oh yes, I remember now this chip, it has one pin that I had to solder on and that's because I think uh, this was actually sent in as a donation from a viewer, so one of the viewers who sent me stuff, sent me an extra one of these chips. So I do have another one of these. It's gonna be in my parts collection. Uh, but this was the one that he sent in. They both worked. And the only thing I had to do is I had to fix the one pin, which is that one there. I soldered it on off of a dead chip or something. All right, so one of the things about this motherboard and I complained about it on the repair is there's no silk screen markings at all. Nothing, nothing at all. And like this socket, which is original, it doesn't even have a notch on it. So. To help you figure out which way things go, they put a little dot right there. So that's the only indicator. So I need to straighten the leg. So I'm gonna use this pin leg straightener thingy. Thank you, a viewer from Germany donated this to me. I'm sorry, I forgot your name. I shouldn't have written your name on here, but I love this thing. It fixes the legs so that they easily go in uh, to the socket without any kind of issue. And the video chip is in there, so is it gonna work? Place your bets now. I am getting no picture. None at all. Wow, so we have a bad chip. I got duped. At least I was only duped out of $3.73, but still. All right, after a minute, what's interesting is now a picture is appearing. Oh, look. Look at that, we have garbage. So it's definitely doing something. So it's definitely not a fake chip. Maybe there's bad contact. Let me um, put some deoxid in there. So I must say, judging by what I saw on the screen there, that was definitely the right colors and it looked like TMS graphics. So this chip is real, like it's definitely a TMS 9918, if it was one of the other variants, it wouldn't even be outputting any kind of usable video. But uh, it's obviously probably a bad part. And here we go, let's try again with deoxid in there. Okay, yep, yeah, so we're getting at least the, the right color background, but it's, a, it's not a good chip. So that's really lame. So close, yet so far. So I entered into basic there. And when I type, you know, I see stuff happening on screen here, but it's definitely not, not looking good, right? What a bummer. Just for fun, let's give uh, this cartridge a try. Munch man, let's see what this does when we tie it with this bad video chip here. So I have the cartridge adapter in there, but it's fine. It just floats. Two, enter. All right, well, I just took the chip out to take a look and <laughs> that's a problem. That's a problem right there. That's gonna keep it from working most likely. It's always a good idea to check your pins and <laughs> make sure you don't bend them like, like I just did. 
All right, the chip is in there with all of its pins. I'm not sure if it's been out the whole time, but maybe. So let's see what happens now. Let's see what happens now. Oh, and would you look at that? It does work. I almost blame this chip for my error, my problem. I was the problem here, not this $3 and what, 73 cent chip from AliExpress. There it is, running Munchman without any issue. Look at that. This chip works great. How do you play this? You have to use these arrows? Oh. Okay, yes, you use the arrows. It's quite a fun game, actually, Munch Man, I gotta say. Anyhow, okay, well, this graphics chip clearly is functional. This game uses sprites and whatnot, so that's why I wanted to run a game and not just run basic because there's a little bit more testing going on when you're running it in a, in a game here and it's working. So I still can't believe I almost accused this chip of being bad and, and yet it actually works. It totally, totally works. $3.73 check mark. We have a working TMS 9981. That's awesome. And yes, incidentally, this chip does get quite hot. Although, I mean, it's been running now for several minutes and you know, I can still touch it. It's not burning my fingers off. I wouldn't say this is any worse than the SID or the VIC-2 on a Commodore 64. Those get really hot too. So running this without the heat shield on is not the end of the world. You know, you can always put a little bit of heat sinks on it if you feel bad, but honestly, it's almost certainly totally fine that way. And the last chip we have to test is the CPU here that's been repainted. Of course, this thing has these darn wires all over the place, not to mention this pin spacing on this CPU is a little weird. It's not normal, it is not standard. Ugh, and it's really hard to get this, my lift, chip lifter tool in there because there's things in the way and oh, it's just a pain in the butt. Well, here we go. Okay, that's, that's how I do it. I do it from that side. <laughs> But yes, like I mentioned, the pin spacing on the CPU is a little different than you would expect for a, a, an IC of this many pins. So I'm using, you know, standard pin headers here, and it's really tough to get the CPU into the motherboard. And I'm, I am positive I am gonna struggle similarly with this one here. And that took about 30 minutes to get the CPU in there. It's really, really frustrating. Basically, the pin spacing on the IC is slightly smaller than it should be. So the pin spacing on the socket, which is normal pin spacing of you know, everything these days, pretty much modern stuff, it's just slightly, slightly wider than what is on here. So when you, when you stick like half of the CPU in like starting on this side, this side over here, it's all misaligned and you have to kind of bend the pins and everything. And I can see how bent up the pins on this CPU are because I struggled so much getting it into the socket. And the same thing happened with this. And the worst thing, I actually had it in and I had it in backwards. I didn't turn it on or anything. I noticed right away, but after struggling, cause I was turning the motherboard around, you got to look at each angle because, it, oh boy. Yeah, anyways, it's really tough. And if you do socket a CPU on the TI-99, Prepare for frustration when you try to get this into there. TI, what were they doing? Using non-standard pin spacing. It's ridiculous. Anyhow, okay, power supply. Anyhow, power supply is reconnected. Video cables reconnected. This is the video chip from AliExpress and this is the CPU from eBay. Will this thing work? Let me just make sure that all my other chips that I had taken in and out a bunch of times are in there because these sockets don't hold on to these chips super tightly because the legs on these are very short for whatever reason. So these come out pretty easily. Anyways, everything should be good to test at this point. So here we go. And we get a black screen. Oh boy. <laughs> so all that effort <laughs> struggling to get this chip in there and it doesn't even work. And it's the one that was the suspect to not work, right? With the painting and everything. What if this is like a 68,000 or something? Of course, it's gonna be dead now because this motherboard gives 12 volts to the CPU since it needs it. I think it also has a another rail of some kind. Chip is not overly hot, but it's definitely not executing any code. 
I'm just gonna plug the speaker in so we can hear if it does that solid tone, which I'm sure it's doing right now. That's what happens when the CPU is not executing as I know so well. Here we go. Yeah, that is the sound of a non-working TI-99. So I think it's time to pull this out and I'm gonna first inspect that I didn't bend a pin going in there. I, I think it's in there perfectly, but um, let's carefully pull this out. Yep, and everything looks fine. All the pins are straight still, so uh, nothing got bent when I put it in, but it was definitely in the correct orientation. I drew a notch on there since uh, there was no silk screen, like I said, but the original CPU was soldered. When I desoldered it, I put a notch just for, for my reference. But that, that does not work. Let me reinstall this CPU, which we know was working because we saw it running. And let's just make sure this computer still works after all my manhandling to get the other CPU in there. Okay, I gotta say, once the CPU has been in there and the pins are sort of bent into the right position, that was really easy to get in. It's just the first time you go to install it, you wanna pull your hair out, if you have hair. Not that I have a lot. All right, is this machine still working? Oh, there we go. That is the normal startup sound. There it is, there's that splash screen. So, eBay failed me with this TMS 9900. Failed. Such a, just a load of junk. So lame. Now it certainly has similar markings when it comes to these circles here. Those line up, the notch matches. So everything about it sort of seems right especially the pin spacing being off. That's typical as well. And it's definitely off like it was on this CPU, which is a real legit part, but this is just a bad fake or rebadged CPU. I mean, who knows? What's the deal? What could happen with this? I guess we can, I could try cracking this open. I'm not really good at that tech. I need to practice that technique. Curious Mark did a video on using a blowtorch or putting this over the stove, like a gas stove heating it up and then you snap it and it kind of exposes the dye. I haven't tried that and I should go into my dead parts bin and give that a test, but uh, that's gonna be beyond the scope of this video. For now, I'm just gonna draw a big X on this fake CPU and I think it's time for some conclusions. All right, well, I've updated my little notepad here. So the TMS 9981, $3.75 and that works. That was a great deal for that not super common chip, but one that's used in enough systems that I'm glad I have an extra one. Two working SID chips, that's fantastic. As I mentioned before, the AR version, I'm really happy to have an extra one of those. I just love those chips and now I have an extra one and 20, you know, 25 bucks, great deal, great deal. I still don't know about the AD558, I'll have to test that at a future time, but at least it uh, didn't rub off like a fake part or like a rebadged part, so that's a good sign. But the CPU, so yep, got ripped off $4.83. Not the end of the world, but uh, one thing it goes to show is that you can definitely get good stuff from that system that happens in China where the parts get pulled off of old machines and re-cleaned and whatever, st legs straight and put back into the marketplace. So yeah, just like don't count out AliExpress and eBay. The fact that this stuff is available for us to buy inexpensively is just incredible. It's an amazing world we live in now that these retro computers are still serviceable, really in a huge thanks to what's going on in China. And with that, I'm gonna end this video here. I hope you found this interesting, and if you did, I would enjoy a thumbs up, but if you didn't, you know what to do, and put your comments and your suggestions in the comment section below, and hit that subscribe button uh, down below the video here, and the little bell icon for notifications if I upload new stuff. It definitely helps my channel if you do that. And that's going to be it. Stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.